Hello and welcome to my unboxing, first look and comparisons of the Starfield limited edition controller from Microsoft. It's right here in this package. Uh, it will cost you £65. I'm not usually a fan of white controllers, but this one looks absolutely gorgeous. And it's not just uh, a change of colour. Um, there's a few other features of this um, limited controller to make it that much more unique. I'll go through some, I say, size comparisons later on with other controllers. A standard Xbox controller will normally cost you about £50. Some of the uh, different colours and variants are anywhere from, you know, 55 all the way up to 70. So without further ado, uh, let's unbox this. I don't think I'm going to need a knife for this one. Let's uh, peel this off, just like that. And then I think... It's just on a hinge. Look at that. That's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. In case you're wondering, the game hasn't released yet. It is due to release in September. And, uh, and if you have Xbox Live Game Pass, you'll be able to download that game for free on release um, as part of your Game Pass subscription. It is a little bit odd that we're getting the controller two, three months um, before. I wasn't even aware that this was released until very recently and it's been out in the wild for about a month or so. I was expecting it to be released with the game and also I wasn't expecting it to be in stock anymore. I'm recording this on the 22nd of July. Let's have a look at the controller then. Um, I really like the box, you know, it's obviously taken a fair bit of time and design to create this box and design it. It says for all into the star field there. I'm really looking forward to, uh, to this game. So this is the controller. Feels very, very light. Is it lighter than the original? It, it seems like it is. D-pad, it's great. Buttons, textured thumbsticks. It's absolutely gorgeous. So much detail on here. Novax remote manual pilot controller, flight control, lock, exit, mode. Another thing that's quite cool with this controller is the um, bumper buttons are textured, unlike the OG uh, controller. You've got your USB-C there if you wanted to um, connect it wired. Um, and I think the rechargeable battery pack could go in there. I do like the triggers. Uh, there's the little vibration motors in there. I don't know whether they're in the Elite 2. I think they are, but they're certainly in these um, Series XS uh, controllers. But I do like the textured bumpers. You don't get them on the, the OG. And you've got the textured grip and the light grey and the darker grey. That's rubberized. It says expansion port. Hard refer to flight manual before operating. Property of... Constellation, and you've got a little symbol and battery. And if we pop this open, uh, you've then got for all into the star field. I'll be using my rechargeable batteries, the Sanyo Any Loops. Uh, Panasonic bought out Sanyo, so they're now Panasonic batteries, which are fantastic, and I strongly recommend uh, those. I mean, of course, I'll use these because batteries, you know, go off after a time. So it's probably best to use these first of all, rather than just sat there. Because also you don't know how long they've been in the box. But after these are depleted, I'll move on to the uh, rechargeable. Uh, you don't get a cable or anything like that. It is just it is just the controller, um, and you get a fair bit of paper, guide. It's very straightforward. You just turn it on, turn on the um, discover button on the console, your Series X or Series S, and it will find it. It's a Bluetooth um, controller, so it will work with your phone. It will work with your tablet. It will work with your PC, of course. Oh, it just feels very very nice. 
So on to the uh, size comparisons then. So here we have the OG uh, Series X controller, which uh, was bundled in with my Series X back in 2020. Can you believe it? Series X is almost three years old. I wasn't a very big fan of this controller and I ditched it immediately for my Elite Series 2 right here, which is the, I say, older style of uh, Xbox One controller, but just beefed up. You know, this came out um, a while before uh, the Series X one did. Um, and I just preferred this. Um, yes, the Series X has got textured um, plastic uh, on the grip and it has that share button, but the actual design is, is different at the top. Um, the triggers, of course, you can change the travel of the triggers. The triggers are larger. Um, with this controller, uh, you can kind of move your fingers around the triggers a little bit more, whereas the um, Series X, it feels quite close. It feels like there's only sort of one area you can put your fingers on. Whereas this, the triggers are longer, um, so you can rest your fingers. Anyway, I just thought I'd make that comparison that I, I ditched this controller straight away and um, started using my Elite 2. However, this one um, brings together mainly um, the Series X controller, but also a little bit of the Elite 2 uh, in that it's got the uh, rubberized textured grips and it's also got these textured um, bu bumper buttons. So it's nice to have the textured bumper buttons, but also the textured triggers, but there's just not much room for your middle finger uh, if you're going to be using your middle finger um, for the triggers. Uh, I've got large hands so you know if you've got smaller hands they sh should be okay. So that's where it measures up um, next to these. Um, all intents and purposes it's, it's going to be the same size as the Series X um, controller but it's going to be a little bit smaller than the Series 2. Obviously there's a massive weight difference here. Um, you know this has metal parts, magnetic parts as well, and it has a built-in rechargeable battery, which is fantastic. But yeah, there, there is a considerable weight difference there. Compared to the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller right here, um, again, this is a great controller. Uh, I don't know what Nintendo could really do to make it better. The HD rumble is, is fantastic on this one. Um, the grips aren't that textured though. And if I had the uh, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom um, special edition controller, I would say this one wins outright, mainly because all that Nintendo did for that controller is they just changed this top faceplate. They kept it um, semi-translucent, um, but they just added some Zelda artwork and things like the gold um, glyphs and, and things like that. And they changed this particular grip to a white color instead of black. I don't know whether that works, um, but they're the only two things that they changed. Uh, and for an extra 15 pounds, it's up to you whether you think that's worth it. Um, but at least this controller for the extra 15 pounds, I definitely think this is worth it because the whole of the controller is different and there's different materials. Everything from the transparent um, triggers to the grippy bumpers to the color of it and the color matching as well as you're getting a dy new dynamic theme when you um, pair this up to your console. With the Zelda one, it would have been nice if you got something in game or a code or, or something that would have been great. And also if they changed more of the um, controller, gave you textured grips or changed the bumper buttons or, or something, that would have been great. So is this the best special edition controller um, around? I'd probably say yes. And then compared to the PlayStation 5 controller, which is my favorite controller at the moment, I think this controller is absolutely fantastic. It's the most comfortable. The dual sense vibration is on another level, and so is the haptic feedback on the tri triggers. And the D-pad is you know, a proper D-pad. It's an absolutely gorgeous controller. Um, the only sort of downside is battery life. It still lasts longer than a DualShock 4, but that's the, the main thing I would improve. If they could find a way of doubling the battery life on this, it would be perfect. Um, but that just gives you an idea of the comparison uh, with those. PS5 one is, is larger. And speaking of um, PS5 controllers, it's interesting to see that Xbox, that is my third least favorite console right now, is hitting it out of the park with these controllers. They're lacking in the consoles, uh, in special edition consoles, which is a bit of a shame. I'd like to see a Starfield specific um, Series X or something in the white with all the fonts and the extra little detail and things and the artwork, that would be awesome. 
PlayStation though are also lacking in the console department. They just have the the, the white console. Um, I'd like to see different colors. Of course, you can get the face plates and things like mine is a full black um, console. And then of course, Nintendo uh, are definitely hitting it out of the park with their uh, console editions. But where are the PlayStation incredible controllers? I remember when they used to be gold controllers, red controllers. PlayStation used to have some really, really decent special edition controllers. And now, in my opinion, they don't. Um, a couple of the colors they, they brought out don't really appeal to me. So at the moment, you've got to split between the three companies. Xbox um, for the best special edition controllers, Nintendo for the best special edition consoles, and PlayStation just for the games. <laughs> What do you guys think of this Starfield special edition controller? It'd be great to hear your opinions and thoughts on it. Um, please do put them down in the comments below. It'd be great to hear from you. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for watching. The Emperor Protects.